Yeah, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Deal? Doing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is, right? <sighs> so, yes. Looking around us, and my joke of the week, uh, we are in beautiful, glamorous uh, New Orleans, home of great food, which I haven't had time to partake of this week, and amazing music, which I haven't heard at all either, but that's why we call it work, right? Uh, we're at the New Orleans Convention Center on the sprint day of the North American DrupalCon 2016. Dick Olson, how many DrupalCons have you been to, and how was DrupalCon New Orleans for you? Ooh, uh... DrupalCon New Orleans has been lovely for me, really. Um, I've been at DrupalCon since Paris, 2009. Uh, I've lost the whole time? The whole time except San Francisco, which I missed due to the ash cloud. Oh. Um, that, was a, that was a fun con. Yeah, that was a... That was a no. <laughs> it wasn't the fun No, so, we, so I had made it... So we all... Like, we live in Europe, you live in Australia. I, I had it. You, you made it. I made it because I went early, but a whole bunch of people couldn't come right until the end of the week because they weren't allowing any airplanes to fly because of the unpronounceable volcano in Iceland that was going on. So you have been to several Drupal cons. Yeah, I think I missed uh, maybe Washington in there. Was that after San Francisco? Was no, that was before? 2009. That was yeah, before. That was before. Okay. So more or less all of them since 2009. It's been a long, long journey. And you've been in you've been in Drupal for ages as well, right? Uh, yeah, so I've uh, been in Drupal since two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Yeah. Were you doing Drupal before you worked at Node One in Stockholm? Yes, I did Drupal as a uh, as a freelancer. Yeah. What would you say your specialty is? What do you? What's your Drupal thing? So I worked a long time on just general contribution to core. Um, but my thing has really been focusing on content workflow and and various topics within that. So uh, deploy module has been something that I've been involved with since early days of Drupal 6. Uh, I took over maintenance ship of that module for Drupal 7. Uh, that ecosystem also includes the UUID module and, and a few other bits and pieces. So the content workflow, content staging, previewing content type of thing, that's been what I've like to play within the, in oh. the community. UUID is actually really great and important. It's something that's in Drupal 8 core now. Yeah. Um, and that means every piece of content that you create ever has a unique identifier, which means that you can merge federated systems of sites, uh, organize better search results, and you never get a conflict where your NID, your node ID is, you know, 20 or 200,000, and therefore, boom, your database breaks, right? Like everything has a completely unique identifier. Right, uh, which is very important when we stage content or move content around between various exactly. environments so that's that was uh, one of the first big contributions that myself and Dave did for Drupal 8 we got segue to Dave yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but that's also like that also helps you solve the problem of live comments happening while you're updating a site in the yep. background and yep Dave Hall how long have you been doing Drupal and what is your first Drupal memory um, okay so I started with Drupal 4.6 um, I messed around with it I first used 4.7 in anger so I think that was <laughs> I think that was around 2008 2000 yeah about 2008 probably I think it was a little earlier yeah yeah maybe. but to talk about using yeah. Drupal 4.7 in anger um, yeah so I had a um, client who wanted some content and an online store and I looked around and I already knew about Drupal I'd done a CMS evaluation for another client and recommended Drupal, they decided to go with WordPress and I said, see you later guys. Um, and so yeah, for this other client, I started using um, Drupal Commerce, uh, Drupal e-commerce from Gordon Hayden back in yes. the day. Yes, yes. You remember Drupal e-commerce, which was before Ubercart, which yes. was before Drupal Commerce. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm one of the grumpy old men of the Drupal community these days. Get off my shopping cart. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or get off my site, full stop. Um, 
Yeah. So um, yeah, I've been doing lots of stuff with Drupal over the years. Um, me and Dick Olson have actually been stalking each other for years. We both applied for the same job at one point. Uh, we co-authored the report to get the um, Symphony components for HTTP routing into Drupal 8 core. So all this thank you, stuff. thank you, thank you for that. Yeah. All of this OO stuff is actually our fault. Um, I know Larry likes to take the credit for it, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 here we go. Yeah, yeah. It's ma okay, I like this. Now we can get a sort of a, a rap battle style uh, dis, dis uh, competition going. Yeah, I, I actually heard him taking credit for it when we were in Mumbai and pulled him up on it, and he didn't seem too impressed. But, uh, uh, you know. So I have to, but I will, I will also thank him, but I have to thank you guys because um, not only do we get a really powerful, up, like up-to-date standards-based, great core that we can work with for years and years now, which is amazing, but um, that has also been a great excuse for me personally to go out and get really involved, um, meet a lot of people in the PHP community, go to a ton of great conferences, um, and really, so, so that's, thank you. I've, I've personally benefited from this. You grumpy old Drupal man, what made you stick with Drupal all this time? Um, well, I, I got into dealing with developer workflow and deployment issues um, around Drupal. So back in the days of Drupal 6, for a single client, I deployed 2,086 production Drupal 6 sites um, using Aga. Um, that was a crazy project. Um, and ever since then, I've been really interested in how do we get code, content, and configuration um, through the, the sausage factory that is Drupal development. And so really trying to um, like dig into that, that problem space. So I, I do some stuff with content staging, um, but Dick has dug into that a lot more. But I look at, so once you've got your content staging solution, how can you automate that? How can you make your config and your code and all of that stuff be able to move around in a coordinated way? So, so deployment in every sense. Yeah, yep. Tell me, please, Dick, um, we've been working on Drupal 8 for the last five plus years. What's your favorite thing about Drupal 8? And where do you think, what sort of horizons does it open for us? So the, the biggest and the most important change, I think, with Drupal 8 is not necessarily that it's object-oriented and all of these things. It's that we've changed our mental model of how we develop Drupal. Uh, semantic versioning and our release process. Because that, that's, that's absolutely... Uh, gonna set us up for innovating quicker and faster, engaging more people. And that did you see? Are you? Did you? You're reading my session notes from what I talked about yesterday. I didn't, <laughs> but I know how you think sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, so so that's really I think the biggest uh, biggest impact. Um, along with that comes uh, Composer. That I know that you talk about a lot, semantic versioning and Composer. Um, so so those things I think. If we have those, everything else will come naturally. Um, more object orientation, more features that we want, more use UI improvements. Uh, the iterative approach is, is what I'm most excited about in Drupal 8. OK, and how about you? Um, well, there's this strange thing that happens between me and Dick. It's like <laughs> I'm thinking something and it comes out of his mouth uh -oh. or the other way around. Um, and so I, I agree with everything that um, Dick said, but also um, I think CMI is like a really important... Now, now called, just called configuration management, I think. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Configuration management. You know, I, I work in a corporate environment, so I love my TLAs three-letter acronyms for those of you watching at home. <laughs> um, so the, um, the, like, um, the configuration management stuff um, makes things so much better. Like I, I embraced features very early on. I could see the power of features and the benefit of features. Um, but having YAML files that you can just shuffle around, import, export. Version all control. Of, yeah, yeah. All of that stuff um, makes things so much easier and you don't end up with like a developer going in and like hacking a feature to just tweak it a little bit and then, you know, um, when you go to deploy it, stuff breaks everywhere. Um, so, yeah, I know they can hack the YAML files as well, but hopefully um, they're 
they do that less. So yeah, I'm I'm really excited about that stuff. So configuration management. Yeah. Dries talked in public in his keynote here in New Orleans about um, how he thought the idea of initiatives that, that we started in Drupal 8, that that went really well. Um, and um, obviously there's been a lot of talk about how to do them better. And one of the ideas is to s essentially, instead of sort of top down announcing we're going to do this, that, and the other thing, um, sourcing ideas from end users, from developers, from the people who work on it, um, to make new initiatives that we can actually use to improve Drupal 8 six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, which is, which is the amazing thing about the semantic versioning model. Yep. Um, so I like the idea there's this sort of community sourced uh, initiatives and he's announced a couple and you are both part of the one that's actually the furthest along already. Were, were you in some ways maybe the model for how to make a new style initiative? Um, we're happy to take the credit for it. So it wasn't Larry this time. It no, was Dave I, and Dick. Larry better not try to take the credit for this one. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about, well, what is the initiative that you're involved in? So um, the initiative is called the Workflow Initiative, or to be more precise, Content Workflow Initiative. And the idea here is really to bring major improvements for our uh, content authors uh, when it comes to content moderation, content workflow, and content staging. Um, and this will be done by doing uh, lots of UX work um, and uh, big improvements to our entity API in core. Um, lots of the things that we are sort of, that we have on our uh, workflow initiative roadmap is already being worked on in Contrib. And these modules for Drupal 8 has been in development for already quite a few years, or two years, I should say. Um, and sort of being battle tested in, in Contrib as well. You both work for Pfizer. Talk about, um, and, and Pfizer is an organization that literally needs thousands and thousands and thousands of websites, and they use a lot of Drupal. Talk about the needs uh, of, of your organization and um, how this fits to those. Yeah, so... Please use as many acronyms as possible. <laughs> okay, I'll do my best. Um, so Pfizer has this thing called MLR, um, me Medical and Legal Review, um, because being a pharmaceutical company, it's a highly regulated industry. Uh, Pfizer can't just... That's an HRI. Yeah, <laughs> um, Pfizer um, can't just put up a um, website saying um, buy this drug, um, it'll um, solve all of your problems. Um, they they need to make sure that the, the claims that are being made are backed by um, research and have been approved by the FDA and there's certain disclaimers that um, need to be on the website and so there's all of this stuff that needs to go through a process where um, both the lawyers and the uh, um, medical people check that um, the content is actually accurate and legal to go on the mm. website. Mm. Now, um, there may also be marketing campaigns where there's particular stuff that has pre-approved messaging that they can use anytime. So that stuff can go through quite quickly, like say for um, a coupon for um, discounted medication or something, they need to be able to roll those out as the TV campaigns are ready to run or the newspaper ads or whatever. Um, whereas, you know, the the changes to the content around the claims and things like that, that can take a long time. So we need the ability to have multiple streams of content changes running through our environments. And, and, and I see potentially as well uh, for different kinds of information, different approval workflows. And then um, I believe you also have to deal with the internationalization side of that and the regulations and the claims are not just straight translations at that point, right? Yeah, so um, it's so like, great data model, right? yeah, there's, um, there's um, a lot of like Pfizer's in a lot of different markets. Each country has their own regulations and, you know, countries like Switzerland, you've got four um, official languages in that country. So Pfizer has to deal with a lot of um, complexity with our, um, our content. Okay. 
So and this work that you're that you're doing fits fits into this model. Um, I like this because this is, uh, you know, I think going to be a successful example of this very pragmatic uh, marriage between between fundamental business interests and doing open source right. Uh, Pfizer has has benefited from our technology and everything that we've put into it. Um, you benefit because you have a great job. Um, and now they need more, and it seems to be clear that uh, like doing that in your work time, that's, you know, and it's still going to be Drupal, right? It's still going to be open source. So um, was that a hard conversation to have with them? With, with Pfizer, you mean, yeah. or? Uh, no. Uh, the, um, the management that we have, the, the IT management that we have at, at Pfizer, and specifically uh, our boss, Mike Lamb, he has a very good vision and he has a very good understanding of, of open source and what it means and and what it can bring back to a company like Pfizer by you know by doing all of these things. Mm. Um, so it was actually Mike who was the driver behind these things and he got the team on board and and of course he needs to have a dialogue with his senior management, but that has been a very successful dialogue so far. Mm. So what sort of a roadmap and, and time frame do you have going on? Uh, for the initiative. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, for the initiative, yes. Yeah, uh, so it, it's going to be a phased um, roadmap. Mm -hmm. So instead of like what happened with um, Drupal 8.0, where it's try to make massive changes and get them to land us one big chunk, we're, we're adopting a, a phased approach and looking at what will actually bring benefits, the greatest benefit at each point in oh. the um, roadmap. So, so I, I hate to use the word agile, but you're going to do a, like a minimum viable product release. And are you going to take advantage of the experimental core modules along the way, hopefully? Yeah, that, that's exactly how we're looking at doing it. I would actually say that what's in Contrib today is our MVP. Oh. And we're iterating, we've been iterating on it in Contrib, like with Deploy, it started in Drupal 6 and iterated in 7 and now 8 and now it's moving into core. And um, we're also um, bringing in parts of Workbench and that started in Drupal 7, um, building on ideas from previous um, okay. content workflows as well. So it's very much that iterative approach and bringing in changes that help people as we get to the, the end game. But um, one of the things we're very conscious of is when we're building our MVP, we're not going to try to turn our skateboard into a car. Um, we are actually going to be looking at um, needing to build a car eventually and making sure that what we build along the way gets us to a car. Oh, cool. Okay. And so and mixing our metaphors here a little bit, but it's also, I guess it's more a matter of um, if, if, if Contrib does more or less all of this pretty well, it's also a matter of abstracting it out to a, the most general use case and sort of strengthening it so that it's so that it can be reliable enough to be in core yeah and there'll also be some parts where we decide okay this will work for the 80 percent case or the 90 percent case and then um drop in a pluggable service um so then you know contrib can still extend what we're building because that's right. the power of okay. drupal we we won't build a something that works for every single user into core so we need to still allow contrib to extend what we're doing Right, so we invested heavily in CK Editor for WYSIWYG, but we still have the, uh, is it the WYSIWYG API, the Editor API? Anyway, we have the, the wrapper around it, so you can still integrate something else if you want to. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and this is very much an ongoing conversation with the whole community in terms of our roadmap and our plan. Uh, it's not like Pfizer is stepping in here and like saying, this is how it should be done. As Dave said, these ideas have evolved outside of Pfizer um, with many different companies, many different clients of both myself and Dave, uh, you know, on our own. So, uh, and in, it's also reflected in Dries' survey that this is something that people are looking for. It's one, you know, media, I think, was one of the sort of main user and content authoring functionalities or feature sets that, that were looked for. The second one was um, workflow related or, you know, previewing moderation type okay. of thing. So, so this is not something where even though we will be working on this initiative as part of our day job, 
this is not something where we are committing and in, in, in right. imposing a roadmap. You're still, it's still a community process. It's absolutely fully a community process, without without a doubt. What sort of help are you looking for, and 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 where should people go to find out more? So we have a, a the official plan issue in the core issue queue is there. Uh, just search for. Uh, anything tagged with the workflow initiative tag, and you will find it. Uh, we will also be gathering our community efforts around um, DrupalDeploy.org, okay. which is going to be a little bit like um, uh, it's a home for our contrib modules in this space, and it will also be the home for the initiative a little bit. Mm. Uh, so those are two place, good places to start, and there you can there you can find a roadmap. Uh, you can find the people who are going to work, sort of the dedicated team for this. And these are people that you can reach out to if you want to help. Cool. Um, we have um, uh, myself as the initiative coordinator. Uh, Dave as a, as a senior member of the team with lots of experience here. Uh, so they will help guide uh, the roadmap and the priorities. I'll be the grumpy old man of the initiative. <laughs> okay. And then, and then we have Tim Millwood. Uh, Andre Jechu and Andre Matescu on the uh, back end coding side of things. Tim is working for Appnovation. Uh, Andre Jechu is, is working for FFW. And Andre Matescu is freelancing. Okay. Oh, I'm Matescu. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested in coding and the back end side of things, those are people you could reach out to. Uh, certainly myself as well. If you're interested in user experience design of front end, then we have Joseph Toth on, on mm. the initiative as well. Okay. Um, you can reach out to him if you want to help with the UX part or, or front end. Um, and they're all listed in that uh, initiative plan that you will find in ECQ. So that's where you can start. So did Dick read your mind and say everything that needed saying? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I, I've also read the plan multiple times. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Hey. So this is this really really exciting, and and um, I I actually it's especially exciting. I just want to underscore this. It's, it's we can see results in, you know, m maybe not eight point two, but in eight point three right. a year from now, you, Drupal will be better and doing more things. Right. There, there will actually be some of our first phases of de development are targeted for eight point two. Wow. So yeah. yeah. Amazing, amazing, I love that. Thank you so much for taking the time to explain this. Um, please come help these folks out. I think uh, this is this is the beginning, there are a bunch of these initiatives coming and this is the beginning of this possibility where we can make make significant differences in a really rapid time frame in our project and, and keep ourselves uh, re really relevant and on the front lines of the web for, you know, quite a while, I think, mm -hmm. quite a while. All right, how was your con? Awesome. Um, it's probably after Mumbai. It's um, my favorite con, so my best North American con I've oh. been to. Oh, all right. Big words. And you? Uh, because of the initiative, I'm super excited, and it's been one of the best uh, conferences here. Fantastic. I've also had a good time, though I haven't seen much of New Orleans because, because it, you know, it's just been one of those weeks. Thank you so much for, for explaining this and doing this, and anyone who wants to help out, come find these people online. Workflow Initiative. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Jim.